All right. Welcome back, everybody, to our remote writing workshop. Sorry, we've taken a little bit of a hiatus. Things have been so crazy busy at Greenleaf in a good way, of course. Um, and so Erin and I have just been insanely busy trying to get everything done. Really busy summer, but that means obviously really good things um, at the company. We've had a lot of incredible books come in. And so all of our teams are just really busy working on those. Um, but we're back and we're ready to talk about more writing workshops. And this week, we're actually going to dis discuss memoirs and self-help books, because we've gotten a ton of submissions in lately that um, speak about memoir. And so for this, for this particular video, we're going to go from memoirs to self-help sales. So here at Greenleaf, we receive a lot and a lot <laughs> of memoir submissions. There are so many writers who want to share their lives, but the problem with memoirs are that they're a very tough genre to sell because almost everyone wants to write one. But the thing is, it's almost impossible to stand out and make an impact. Today, we're going to dive into how your memoir can find the most readers and make the biggest splash. So Erin, why are there so many people nowadays writing memoir? Well, I'm that's probably kind of common sense because you probably know people who decide I'm going to write a book and they start with a memoir because write what you know, right? Um, but people often write memoirs as their first books also because it's a way of working through pain. Uh, it's a cathartic experience. It's just your first instinct. But that experience isn't necessarily a book that other people will want to read. Um, so you can use that writing experience of your memoir as therapy, but you don't necessarily have to publish it. And you probably won't be able to, honestly. Um, everyone thinks their story is interesting, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will be interesting for a mass audience or anyone outside of your friends and family. And people read memoirs to gain something from the experience, not to read about your life. They want to leave with a takeaway. So if you are going to write that just straight memoir, your writing better be excellent and your story better be incredible yet still relatable in some way and remember that almost every topic has already been covered so sounds easy right <laughs> so how can someone write a successful memoir well again you have to have an extremely powerful narrative voice and writing style so you need to honestly take a step back and assess your writing skill Ideally, you want to get some outsiders involved, not your friends or family. You want to get feedback on your writing. You have to know if your writing is very, very good. You can't be in any way fooling yourself about this. Mm -hmm. You also have to have a very unique premise. How is your memoir different from everything else out there? Someone should hear or read your short pitch and say, wow, that's an incredible story. I want to read it send me your manuscript now. And keep in mind how many memoirs have already focused on addiction, recovery, cancer, abuse, dysfunctional families. And that might sound callous, but honestly, almost everything has been done. So you need to think about how and why your memoir is different. Why would a large audience want to spend their hard earned money reading it? reading about your life. And that's not to say your life is boring, but you just have to think about publication for a large audience if it's gonna work. Some more tips if you wanna write a straight memoir. Don't write a memoir that begins with your birth to the present time. That's an autobiography. You're not a historical figure that's gonna warrant that. And a memoir is not a summary of everything that's ever happened to you. So ideally, you want to pick a moment or a series of moments to feature in your memoir. And you also don't want to write just a series of vignettes without any narrative arc, um, really, unless you're a celebrity. Uh, no one's interested in random diary, interest, uh, diary entries um, or just your ponderings uh, kind of patched together. Even if you are someone famous, a memoir with no narrative arc is still really risky. So overall, if you're writing a straight memoir, you need to have a very unique premise and your writing must be stellar. And just to keep things absolutely real, because we are always 100% transparent with you guys. So we've talked about platform before a lot, how platform is really important in the book selling process. And so when you're writing memoir, 
you have to have such a notable name for people to care about your life story. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. There have been some memoir from, I've read some incredible memoirs from people who don't really have noteworthy names, but again, those are, you know, those don't necessarily stand out unless you have a direct referral from someone. And they're a little bit harder to sell in the commercial market because, you know, not a lot of people know your name unless you have a really unless you're actively working on your platform and you're really pushing that book and that the takeaways from the book resonate with a lot of people, it's going to be a very, very tough sell. And that's just the nature of the business. And so keep in mind when you're hearing, you know, like memoir is hard, memoir is hard. It is, but we're going to tell you some of the ways that you can you can um, make a bigger splash and make it um, make yourself, you know, a little bit more appealing to the commercial market as well. Exactly. So what if your memoir doesn't fit these criteria? So what are the other options? What you were just touching upon, if it doesn't fit this criteria, if your writing is not amazing, if your story is not something incredible, consider chalking up your memoir to cheap therapy. Move on to book number two. Um, so many people don't end up publishing their first book. They do two or three or four. It's, it's practice. Uh, you're figuring out what's working. However, if the writing and premise are solid, a great avenue to consider is angling your memoir towards self-help, um, kind of an I change, now you can change approach. And this satisfies readers' insatiable appetites for that incredible first-person narrative and also this huge desire for self-help books that are out there. And with this self-help angle where you're offering advice within your story, alongside your story, you can reach a larger audience. And readers are seeking takeaways, as I mentioned, and the self-help memoir is an excellent way to reach this audience who's craving that. And when you embrace that angle, your life doesn't have to be as unique. In fact, it should be extremely relatable to the reader. You're sharing what you've learned from the common challenges that we all experience. So whether it's parenting or dating or being disorganized, your story doesn't have to be about surviving some love affair with a penguin researcher in Antarctica, explosions, all of these things that no one's ever experienced. You're sharing the wisdom that you've learned through your own experience and also research. Um, you're mixing your personal story with lessons for the reader that they can use. And of course, your first person perspective adds credibility. Uh, one of my favorite uh, self-help memoirs is Gretchen Rubin's The Happiness Project. And that was way back in 2009. Mm -hmm. Her writing and story were interesting and relatable, but it wasn't so out there. But I still use her advice daily over 10 years later. The one I always remember is she said, um, to add to happiness in your daily life, it's the two minute rule. If something takes less than two minutes, do it. So if I walk into a room and I see like, you know, clothes on the floor and I'm apt to go, don't worry about it. I think to myself, it takes less than two minutes, do it. And I pick it up mm -hmm. and it really does have this effect. So these are little things that that was a memoir, but she's giving wisdom that she learned to overcome these things to become happier that the reader can take away. And I'm still using it 10 years later. Yeah. And something I want to add to that is a lot of self-help have very heavy memoir content. Like they share their personal stories because they're hoping to, you know, relate to the reader. And so just to throw in there from an editorial perspective and Erin, you can talk to this better than I can, is when we go to review submissions and it has very, very heavy memoir Sometimes if it's too memoir heavy, it's going to be hard to sell it in the self-help category. So if you're wanting to go more that route, it is highly advised to work from an edit with an editor from the beginning because it's going to be really hard to change to shift a complete memoir narrative into the self-help category, especially when we go to sell and distribute the book. So that's just little tidbit of, a, of advice there that we, you know, because we talk about this almost every week in Submission Discovery. Mm -hmm. So what should a writer include in self-help memoir? Well, this are, these are a few things that you would want to think of yourself, um, especially if you're not going to be working with an editor, if you're going to be kind of moving it over to self-help, you need to show the reader how you know what you know now. So how you manage your personal growth. So if you're showing these scenes from your life, um, for example, if you overcame uh, gaslighting in some sort of toxic relationship, or you learned how to overcome your fear of being too assertive as a woman um, at work, or how you became super organized when you used to be a total mess, 
Um, these are all things that you can share, but make sure you're also sharing and giving actionable advice on how the reader can overcome this just like you did. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to challenge your reader. So if you can show your raw truth, you're challenging the reader to also look at themselves. And that's inspirational. Um, you definitely want to help them. You can do this through with tips, bullet lists. Again, it should be prescriptive, provide actionable steps. Um, and then you also want to compensate them in the end. You want to show the readers that you did it. One obstacle, one scene at a time, and show your optimistic future to them. One that they can participate in and share if they follow this advice that you're giving them. Mm -hmm. All right. So whether someone is writing a traditional memoir, memoir or one that is self-help, what does the writer need to find success? Well, you talked about this earlier and it's so important. Let's talk about it again, because regardless of whether you're sticking with a memoir without an ounce of advice, or if you have one that's basically Dear Abby, you want to start with a strong platform because if readers don't know who you are, you won't find readers. And it is not true, as we've said so many times, that if you publish it, readers will come. You have to find them, mm -hmm. establish your internet presence, expand your reach on social media. And again, this, as we've always said so many times, this is not something you do once you finish the manuscript. You need to start doing this sooner rather than later. Write some blogs or articles, publish whenever you can, capture email addresses whenever you can along the way. Those are your future readers. That's who you're reaching out to. Try to get speaking engagements in front of audiences, large, small, anything you can do. If you're posting great content, you're going to get more readers. And this higher profile is going to bring readers with you for when the time comes to publish your book. So no matter what, no matter what your genre is, build a platform and then you can reach more readers. So and another great thing I want to touch on is, you know, we've done a video on this uh, back when, but finding that hook, finding the why, like why are people going to care? So especially with memoir and especially with memoir self-help, there have been tons of books published in self-help and in memoir. And the, the root reason of why someone is going to buy the book is how is it going to help them? Because at the, at the end of the day, everybody purchases a book because either they, they want it for them. They either want it, you know, for a B treat or they're interested in, in the genre, but especially if it's self-help or memoir, what are they going to take away from it? What is their why? What, what is something that stands out from your book that is going to help this person? Because like we said, there's been tons of books published. So how is yours going to be different? What are you going to do differently? Exactly. Always important. <laughs> All right. So what is our assignment for this week? Okay, if you were to write a memoir, especially if you're already writing one, think about how you could turn it into self-help and possibly reach more readers that way. So what about your story can help others? What have you learned? How have you thrived? What have you overcome? What can you offer readers? So get specific about actionable advice. Consider this unique angle, and then you might have a successful self-help book in the making. You never know. Think about there it. There you go. Awesome. Well, I love that we got to discuss this this week because like, like I said, we've had a ton of really great memoir submissions come in. So these are just some key pointers to think about when you're writing a memoir or gearing in the more memoir self-help space. Just keep these in mind when you're, when you're going into that writing process. I don't know if anyone else is dying from allergies or if it's just me, but <laughs> we are in Austin. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're in Austin. They're just, they're terrible. But we will be doing these every couple of weeks because like I said, Aaron and I have just been absolutely slammed bu busy. But as always, we love your guys' su suggestions. And we're now on TikTok and we're actually sharing tidbits of these remote writing workshops on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, make sure to give us a follow and send us in recommendations of what you want us to cover. And we are happy to do it for you. Yeah. And challenge us too. If you're like, what are you talking about? Tell us that too. You know, give us feedback. We'll discuss it. Yeah. We love it. We love mm -hmm. it. All right, guys. Well, we will see you guys the next time. Bye.